Hey guys. Uh. Well, <laughs> it was bound to happen at some point. Uh, this is post commentary right now because I forgot to record my audio for this. I eventually realized that I do, but that's eight minutes into the video and it's only for about, I don't know, not very long, like a minute maybe. Luckily, I didn't talk about anything too important. Uh, it was mainly just me talking about, man, it's weird not hearing, because I'm looking at the screen right now, and it's weird not hearing the game audio while I'm talking. It's like I'm just talking to myself, although I've been over this before. I've, you talk to yourself, but then when you upload them, hey, look at this, there's somebody watching, so I'm not talking by myself anymore. Now, what is happening? Well, I've already been through this, so I know what's happening, but to you? Whoa. The game really slowed down there. Must have been like drop frame or something. But oh man, he's going crazy. This is a boss that you have to fight while in intense gravity. So what you have to do is basically just charge up your plasma beam and then shoot it and it should go for his little tail thing that you can I guess you can call it tail there. Uh here I forgot about that move and didn't even bother to jump. It's actually pretty simple to dodge. Uh, you just basically sp uh, screw attack and jump over it. And basically just... What I recommend is staying on the top level at all times and then just sort of sense moving back and forth. Because uh, that will fully charge your beam and you can get a quick shot in and then dodge again. And then once it fully freezes, take a super missile and shoot him in the face like so and that takes down a good chunk of his health now during this whole thing I think it was something like I think it was like right about here or maybe the shot after I started saying come on show me your pretty face so I'm gonna try to keep the commentary as close to the original as possible so yeah there it goes and then once his face sort of cracks a little, he starts going all crazy again, and then basically just do the same strategy over and over again. Just dodge back and forth, and then shoot. Oh, and this, when he does this, I don't do it right away, but sent... I didn't do it there, but when he gets close to you, you can sense move out of the way. You can do, like, a backflip towards him, and it's easy enough for you to dodge him. So, and I think I do it here. Yeah, like that. And he doesn't hit you. It wasn't a very good example. I eventually do it better later on, so... Uh, so there's not really much going on. Just dodging energy balls and jumping around. And... Oh, and now he's frozen again. And now I think here... Oh, I shot him. Okay, here, I think... Yeah, see, it dodged it perfectly. Uh, charged up my missiles. Show me your pretty face. And then shoot him. Again. Got did I get him there? I don't think I did. And then to move, that was uh, uh, I'm not even sure what just happened just now. I don't remember that. I don't remember hopping over there. Shoot him, got him, flies back to the middle. Uh no, it might have been around here when I say start showing your pretty face. Cause I thought this was actually pretty fairly funny in my commentary. There, that's that's what I was talking about before. How you sort of do a backflip and you dodge him completely, you don't need to jump. Um, this boss is actually not that difficult. It's quite easy, actually. I've lost three energy tanks now fighting it, but that's just because I was being stupid. Sorry, just on my headset here, hurting my ears slightly. Uh, here, that's just screw attack over that. I'm not sure if I've done that already or not. I'm too busy talking. I'm not paying attention. Now he's frozen. Come on, show me your pretty face. Show me your pretty face. Come here. Face. No, nope, missed. Um, one thing I was talking about, but I didn't really get into a lot of detail about it, was how good it feels to finish a Let's Play, because, like I said in the last one, we are surprisingly close to the end of this game. Oh, and there I was, like, wall-kicking off the wall, which was really kind of awkward. Um, uh, oh, I think, uh, 
I needed to like scratch my ear or something, so I paused the game and I just pushed the first button that that I pushed, and it just so happened to be the home menu. Oh, and then we defeat him. Pretty face and ah! not so pretty, not so pretty, not so pretty. Yeah, that's basically what my reaction was. So, yep, yeah, and then uh, I mentioned that that is the nightmare from Metroid Fusion making a comeback. Although chronologically, I never mentioned this before. Chronologically, uh Oh, uh here I just jumped down real quick. Are you going to do it? Oh, that's cuz I don't know where the next navigation booth is, so I jump down real quick and heal myself. But as I was saying before, chronologically this doesn't make any sense cuz the uh the nightmare was created on a ship that is not the bottle ship. So, all things just sort of Confusing. Uh, yeah. So, it's about another two minutes until live commentary. Yeah, about that. So, at about six minutes now. Commentary kicks in at literally about eight minutes into the video. Um, so, I don't think I was talking... Yeah, here I was saying, it feels so good to finish a Let's Play, you know? It's just something that people enjoy watching... And once it's done, you get that good feeling that no matter how many people are watching your videos, people are still enjoying your videos. That's why you keep doing this, and it just it just has such a good feeling doing this, you know? People are enjoying what you're doing. You're bringing happiness into their life, I guess. Not to be so corny or anything, but... Yeah, it's just... Yeah, ugh. It just feels so good doing that. So good. Oh, you notice that little flicker right now? I couldn't edit that out because, uh... I can only literally, I can, literally, I can only really, f uh, edit it out if, um, if it's a white screen or a black screen, so if there's something in the background, I can't really fix it, because it just wouldn't look that good. It would just sort of, like, cut away to, uh, to that happening. And you may have noticed that the bottle ship is now activated. And my post-commentary is almost up. Uh, oh, here I'm saying that there is a long cutscene coming up. So, sit back, relax, grab a drink, and enjoy, because uh, there's not going to be much more progress in this video. And I've got about 15 seconds until my live commentary kicks in. And you may want to turn down your volume, because here I'm realizing it, and I'm going to yell... In three, two, one. Here you go. Damn it! Ugh, that's all I gotta say. I have recorded eight minutes of footage. None of it has my audio in it. Ugh, oh, I am in really upset right now. So, a lot. What you just watched was post commentary. Damn it! Ugh, oh, I am upset. I thought I was recording, I wasn't. Oh man. Alright, so. We have a lengthy cutscene coming up, as I'm sure you already know. Ooh, pretty lights. Uh, I should mention, there are no. Um, oh, come on, Samus. There are no uh, upgrades uh, in Sector Zero. Okay? Just thought I'd let you know that. Whoa, the camera angle's like at an angle. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh, and I kind of like this music, too. The Sector Zero music. Even though, really, it's just like two notes alternating back and forth. Alright, guys. Cutscene time. Here we go.
Samus, can you hear my voice? I read you loud and clear. Adam. You know what lies up ahead. The Metroids and the artificial intelligence that controls them. The fruit of the Galactic Federation's twisted project. Yes. So why did you shoot me? You can't destroy these Metroids. What do you mean? Sector Zero Metroids most likely can't be frozen. What are you talking about? There's a strong likelihood that the Metroid's mortal weakness, the vulnerability to cold, has been overcome through genetic manipulation. And if that's true, there's no way you can destroy them. But that baby earlier, the infant Metroid, you were able to freeze it. True. My guess is that it was because it was still in a larval stage. But who can say? One thing's for certain. They're definitely propagating Metroids. Developing bioweapons with an obvious and fatal flaw would be suicide. It's hard to imagine the military mass producing defective weapons. Then again, none of this makes sense. Metroids are lethal. Their extinction was a wise decision. And now, since no one has the technology to defeat them, they cannot be allowed to exist. Hang on, Adam. First, I need to know why you're credited as the creator of the Metroid military program report. I received the request to write the report from Galactic Federation Headquarters. In that report, I outlined the potential dangers of such a program and explained categorically why it shouldn't be attempted. HQ listened, but a small group within the Federation co-opted my report for its own purposes. Samus, you'll be fully recovered soon. I have several missions for you. This facility appears to be on an intercept course with Galactic Federation HQ. If what Madeline Bergman said is correct, there's a distinct possibility that this is the start of an attack by MB against the Federation. One way or another, some sort of attack is clearly imminent. You have to find a way to divert the ship off its intercept course. I've located a survivor in room MW, toward the rear of the Bioweapon Research Center. Whoever it is will be a key witness. Secure the survivor's safety. And defeat Ridley. He's as much of a threat as the Metroids. And one last word of warning. Madeline Bergman is no ally. Hold on, Adam. What are you planning to do with the Metroids here in Sector Zero? Leave it to me. I'll deal with this place. You have a plan for dealing with Metroids that can't be frozen? Sector Zero has a self-destruct protocol. If the Sector receives a significant amount of damage, the unit is programmed to detach and self-destruct. A powerful explosion will eliminate the Metroids and MB without leaving a trace. Don't you dare, Adam. Let me go in. I'm the only one who has a shot against the Metroids. We have to take the chance. 
Please, Adam. You have to trust me. You have to trust me. Just give me a chance. Samus, I wish I could battle Ridley. But I can't. Unlike you, I'm no galactic savior. I'm merely human. But I can save you. You should be completely healed soon. There isn't much time. We both need to get started on our missions. I'm sorry for getting a little rough with you. Good luck, Samus. Objections. Right, lady? Adam vanished, my best friend, the person who understood me best, the closest thing to a father I had. Thoughts swirled through my head. I couldn't come to grips with what had happened. Such a cruel way to say goodbye. I was the only one who witnessed Adam's last moment. And though it shook me, I was calmer than I usually am. I think Adam granted me that eye of the storm clarity, his final gift to me. There was no time for me to grieve his death, but there was time for me to say, Adam, thank you. Leave the rest to me.